welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Houting Premier David Makura last week met with stakeholders to discuss the report on the socio-economic impact of e-tolls in the province. Natalie Grieve tells us about the latest developments. Hi Natalie. Hi Chanel. What was the purpose of the latest meeting between the Premier and stakeholders? Well, as you know, last year, Gauteng Premier David Makura compiled a, a panel of transport experts to have a look at the socio-economic impact that e-tolling has had on the province. Um, following that formation, they took a number of submissions from representatives of labor, uh, the private sector and business to, to hear about how it's actually impacted on these various sectors. Following these submissions, the panel then compiled a report with several recommendations and findings which it then presented to uh, the Gauteng Provincial Government. Um, and this, this report was made public earlier this year. Um, and this most recent round of uh, stakeholder engagements, which happened last week as you mentioned, was to allow those that made initial submissions to, to provide feedback on the, the report findings and recommendations. Um, David Makura has been very clear since the beginning of the process that he wanted as much involvement from residents of Gauteng and the, the provincial private sector throughout the review process. Um, so he's made it very clear that whatever comes out of those stakeholder sessions will be considered. Uh, and this is considered the, the sort of final step before a decision is made on the, the fate of the system. How have organisations like Outer and the JPSA responded? Well, Outer initially applauded the Premier for instigating the review process, um, but they have stated that they don't feel that the process, all the findings of the report, are sufficient to resolve this very polarised clash of positions on the e-tolling system. They say that the, there's still an open question about whether or not it's actually a lawful system um, and still feel as though it should be heard in front of a criminal court. To this end, they've also promised to take this fight to the presidency uh, and to Parliament as well. Uh, similarly, the Justice Project South Africa has said that it doesn't believe it was a, a very well thought out process. In fact, they say that it was a waste of time, a waste of money and even a waste of effort. Um, they feel that the recommendations made by the panel, which include a hybrid funding model um, and, and other, other alternative sources of funding, but still based on a user pays principle, isn't sufficient and doesn't actually replace the ETOL system, which they were hoping for. So they, they're not very op optimistic about the outcome of the, of the uh, review process. What was Sunroll's response? Sunroll has continued to defend the ETOL system, um, and in fact they feel that the report vindicates their decision to implement it. Um, while popular opinion um, in terms of interpretation of the report has come out um, saying that it basic, the report basically states that it places a disproportionate financial burden on very low income households, uh, Sunroll is actually arguing that this, the opposite is true, that it actually proves that low income households only contribute about 0.4% of the total ETOL revenues. Um, ultimately, however, the decision to keep ETOLs or do away with it is one that's going to be made at a central government level. And we all know that, that Sunroll is a parastatal, so it will have to abide by whichever decision is made um, by the state. What will happen now? The Premier said he's now going to take the feedback from last week's stakeholder engagement session to uh, the Gauteng Provincial Government. Uh, it will then be discussed with the central government, who is represented in this case by Sil Ramaphosa, and a decision on, on the fate of the system is expected by the end of the month, which is February. But he did warn last week, however, that the user pay system is still going to be enforced in some way or another. So users of the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project can't expect a free ride anytime soon. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.